welcome to My Own Worst Enemy. It is time to continue the playthrough of Midway Solitaire Deluxe. So when we last left off, we had just, well, we didn't just pull it, but we had actually pulled this Illusions marker in the intelligence phase. And so now we're going to see yet more movement along this Illusions line. So that this may not be a good thing for us. I don't know. We'll see. Just going to dive right in because we've already gone, we've already done the overview of the game and everything. So we're going to continue along here and start with the, um, well, not the operation determination. We have done that, so we're going to go right into this search segment. And here, if you'll recall, this is where you look for unspotted task forces that the Japanese can actually spot. There's none here in the Aleutians route. There is a task force in Alaska, but that's, I think that's out of range. One, two, three. Yeah, that's out of range, so there's be no spotting there so we will go right on well you know what I should be doing too is moving my marker so that's the search attempt there will be no search attempt there and now we go to the movement segment the task force movement segment and let's see what happens here so I'll grab a d6 and we will roll for we'll start with this main body unit and you'll remember that from the movement table, you roll a d6 and it will tell you how far that is going to move. So this is the middle column of the movement table. We roll, we get a three. So we cross-reference that and we see the main body is going to move two spaces. So that's going to put them at the Aleutian Islands. So that's going to be one and two. And of course, they would have to stop there anyway. If they'd rolled, if they'd rolled enough to move three spaces, they would still be required to stop there because that's an objective space. So now we will roll for the second carrier strike force, and that is on the first column of that movement table. So let's see what, how far they're going to move. That's a three. So for that, for them, that's going to be, there's also two spaces. So they won't quite make it all the way to the Aleutian Islands. They'll make it to AL4 on this um, route line. And I'll stop there. And finally, the invasion force. Let's see how far they're going to move this turn. They're all six. And on this chart, that is two spaces. So one, two, it'll take them up to AL3. Not as bad as it could have been, I guess. So we seem to be doing a little bit better than I thought we were going to be doing after the movement. Now, if you'll recall, last time I had not written down this incident marker part here, and it's, this is where we actually have to pull one of the, uh, randomly pull an incident marker after the uh, task forces for the Japanese have moved. So that's this cup. I'm gonna give it a good shake. And we'll draw this incident marker, the first one of the game. Shouldn't be, but it is. <laughs> we pull it and it is incident submarine. I'm gonna set that there for a second. Grab the rule book because that's where you will find e exactly what these incident markers are and it tells you exactly what you should do with them. So, and it may be on the, let's see if, is it on the player, player aid card? I don't think so. I don't think so. It could be. No, it's just the sp special operations markers are there. So you, you basically just look at this and there's the submarine. So it tells you if drawn during the Japanese movement segment, which here it was, an IJN task force may be subject to a submarine attack. And then if drawn during the U.S. operations, then of course the U.S. task force may be. So this is, this is good for us. So in both cases, all friendly task forces in the space closest to the enemy home base or the active route are spotted. Oh, this is interesting. So let's make sure we do this right. All friendly task forces in the closest space to the enemy. Well, there's no, let's see. So this is the Japanese. So I guess they're, from our point of view, it's the Japanese friendly task forces are spotted closest to the enemy home base on the active route. So what that is telling me is the, the main, let's see, the main body task force would be the, the friendly task force that's closest to the enemy home base, which is Alaska. So that task force is going to be spotted. So we flip that to its spotted side. One task force in that space, well, there's only one, is subject to submarine attack. If more than one task force is in the space, pick one at random. Perform anti-sub warfare for each carrier, light carrier, destroyer unit in the task force. So this is the main body, main body B. So we'll flip that, and there is 
there are two destroyer units in that task force, so that qualifies because it says destroyer unit. And we will roll a d6 on a one or two, the submarine aborted, there's no effect. Uh, three through six, the submarine gets through and may attack the task force. So let's see if we even need to continue this. We'll roll a d6. We roll a four, so the submarine gets through the screen and may attack. The submarine attacks one naval unit, roll 1d6. If the result is less than or equal to the number printed on the marker, that target receives one hit. Resolve the hit procedure using, well, normal hit procedures, basically. So if the attack was against IJN task force, you may select the type of naval unit attack. Well, in this case, it's not going to matter. It's going to be a destroyer either way. And so it was saying that if the result is less than or equal to the number printed on the marker, and I don't really tell you which marker, or I mean which number that they're referring to. Remember, there are three markers. There's the air, the surface, and the ground. So I'm going to assume they're talking about the surface number, which is that middle number. So we're going to roll the d6, and so it's just, I'm just looking because there's two destroyers. So I guess it's just we pick one of those units and it will take the hit. So we will do that. Uh, so we're looking for a two or one or two, right? Less than or equal to. So yeah, two or less. And we hit one of the destroyers. We roll a two. So that's actually a submarine hit. So that's going to damage one of these destroyers. Oops. It's going to damage one of these destroyers, so that'll flip it from its... Let's see if I can do this without having the camera blur. So this is going to flip from its regular side over to its damage side. Actually, no, I'm doing that wrong. So th these, you don't flip the, the unit. What I did, I <laughs> and I'm doing this without looking at the uh, applying the hits. You got to remember, you actually have to... It, a hit is one thing, but then you have to determine the result of what happens when you actually hit it. So let's put the destroyer here. And we're going to have to roll on the attacking table. So if you look at the procedure in, in, in 9-4, they tell you, you know, once you have that hit, then you would actually roll on the table to determine the outcome of the hit. And if we're near, near a ground unit, then yeah, you'd flip it. So careful, make sure you're, you're following the rules. So this is a destroyer. On a 1 to 2, there's no effect. 3 through 6, it... Whoop. <laughs> I'm looking at the wrong table. We're not trying to repair the destroyer. We're trying to sink it. Okay, so uh, it is on a one is no effect. Uh, two through four will damage it. And five to six will sink it. So let's roll our d6. We roll a four, which is for a destroyer is damaged. So that means since we actually damaged the destroyer, it will go into the damaged units block over here on this side of the board for the Japanese. So that was good. That was actually a very, very good thing for us. So we take the incident marker. It will go back into the that random cup. And so now we have this task force. Is, is there anything else we need to resolve in that? I don't think so. Let's take a quick look. Uh, nope. So that was it. And you can tell there are some pretty interesting um, temporary, or not temporary, random incident markers in that cup. And we've spotted this task force now, and there's only one destroyer left in it, but we could actually, we can actually attack that now without having to do a search first. So that, that was the movement segment, and I, I did write down, do the incident marker, we did that. Now we go to the USN reaction segment. And so here, launch carrier-based, not land, bombers and fighters against spotted task forces. So this is where if I had any carrier-based units, and I don't. Well, I, I do have Task Force 8, but there's no carriers in it. There's only a destroyer and a cruiser in it. And I have one bomber now in the Aleutians, so maybe we can do something with that. I can't remember. And then launch naval aircraft, uh, land fighters, naval, naval fighters and land fighters for cat missions in the same space. So again, if we had fighters in, this, in the Aleutian Islands here, we could launch those for cap duty. We don't. I think that's all we can do for the U.S. reaction segment. That'll take us to the IJN air unit launch segment. And this is where we have to go back and see what's in this task force. Task force uh, is the second carrier strike force. So let's flip those all back over again. 
we still have the Shokaku and Kaga in there, so we're gonna have to determine exactly what those what missions those those aircraft are gonna take. And I think this is one of those areas where I kind of had a question on that, you know, the question card thing I had. I'll, I'll have to dig it out and look at it. But one of the question, one of the questions I have about this game is I don't understand why in this case that, that it says. Well, let's see, where did it go? They're very specific about launching carrier-based bombers and fighters against these spotted units and island bases. But yet I cannot launch this land-based bomber. I, you know, we've spotted this task force and it is going to come in with its its fighters and bombers potentially. We know that's out there. Why can't I launch that land-based fighter against this task force in this US in reaction segment? I, I don't really understand that rule. Maybe someone can explain it to me. It kind of bugs me that I can't do that. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's one of the things that was on my card. But let's go ahead and continue along. So we can't, no cap missions are being launched and we have no carriers that we can launch our aircraft from. So we now need to determine where it is that the fighters from the task forces are going to go. In this case, it's just the one task force that has the carrier. So we come over here, we find Shokaku. And remember that you're always going to want to do the bombers first because the fighters could potentially go out on uh, escort duty. And Kaga, I believe I said. So we're going to pull out a bomber for Kaga and its fighter, and we'll determine where they're going to go. And I should also mention that uh, there were some interesting comments in the last video, to the last video. There, there's apparently some errata has been discovered for this. One of the things that someone left uh, in the comments was that the fact it was the Zuiho, I believe. Its its counters, its bomber and fighter counters had some 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 of the numbers were incorrect when you flip the unit. So we're gonna have to be aware of that. So yeah, thanks for people who left uh, comments like that. That's the kind of stuff I want to see. Is what errata are we uh, not really aware of? And that's certainly one that I was not aware of, but I am now. So I that appreciate any of those comments like that that, that clarify things. Another thing that uh, on Board Game Geek, and I responded to the comment, was there was a question as to whether the coastal uh, defense ship facts fortresses could fire against surface ships. And they, in fact, can, and we'll, we'll see that when we get to it, the, the coastal defense unit can fire at naval, surf, naval surface units. So we'll see that. So thanks for pointing those things out. All right, so we're going to determine where the bombers are going to go first. We'll start with the Kaga. And I will roll a d6, and we will check on the uh, air mission determination table. So we're looking at a naval bomber here. It's the third column. So let's roll the first one. That is a five. So it is going to attack the objective. That makes sense. So we'll move it over to and put the air unit over here for now for the U.S. So the, this bomber from the Kaga is going to attack the coastal defense unit. The bomber from the Shokaku. Rolls a six, which is also attack the objective. Now we'll determine whether or not the fighters will fly cap over the main body task force or if they're going to escort those bombers. Shokaku fighter is going to, that's a five. It is going to fly escort. Interesting. So it's going to come along with, uh, we'll say the Shokaku bomber and then the Kaga fighter unit. Rolled a two, which is, it's going to fly cap over the main body, or I'm sorry, not the main body task force. It's going to fly cap over the second carrier strike force. And so that is going to do it for determining the air missions. Now we go to mutual combat. And here is where I'm going to put out the battle marker. So I'm going to bring the, we'll bring the coastal defense unit down because it's, it's in the battle. The two bombers, which are going to try to attack that coastal defense unit. So they're going to be here in the attack objective box. And the Shokaku fighter group is going to fly escort. And I don't think that's really going to matter in this battle since there's no USN fighters out there. So uh, do we have everybody now? We have the coastal defense unit, the escort, and the bombers. 
And I don't know, maybe this is why you cannot launch the object or the um the base bomber maybe it's because i well, see that wouldn't make sense either though i mean in this case it might make sense because you do have fighters coming in and and these other bombers and maybe they don't want to launch that bomber for whatever reason but i, I just still, i don't understand that at all all right so that is the setup for the attack so we will pull out the the combat procedure now and i, I did post these up on board game geek so if you would like to print out a copy of these they're there for um, for saving your rule book. And another person also posted one, so thank you for that. Again, this was something that was needed in the game that was not provided. So let's go through the combat procedure now. So you do it in order. The first thing you do is your air to air. Well, there's no air to air here. We do have an escort, but there's he's got easy duty. He's just gonna fly along with that bomber at this point. Anti-air, fire all ground and naval units, air combat factors at enemy units. We do have air combat factors here in the coastal defense fortress. We have two, so I've got to roll a one or two to hit one of these aircraft. So let's roll a three. That's not going to do it. That's a miss. So that's anti-air. Now we do the air naval step. Fire all air units naval combat factors against enemy naval units. Well, we have no, no naval units in the Aleutians, no U.S. naval units in the Aleutians. Continuing along, air ground step. Fire all air unit, all fire all units at eligible ground units. So we do have that. We have the Shokaku and the Kaga bombers can now fire at the Aleutians coastal defense unit. And they will do that. So looking at the, I'll do the Shokaku bomber first, looking at its ground attack factor, it's a two, so it's got to roll a one or a two to do anything here. So we'll roll, it rolls a one, so that's one hit, and I'm going to mark it with another D6. So that's one hit on the coastal defense. And then the Kaga has to roll a three, uh, three or less, so a little bit better bomber here. That's a three, so that's two hits on the that is two hits on that coastal defense unit. Since these are this is two hits, so since this is a land unit, it's there's no table for land units. It's simply you flip it. So it will flip to its damage side. And then there's another hit. So that second hit is going to destroy or yeah, it's gonna eliminate this Aleutian coastal defense unit. So we will put that over into the USN eliminated units, and it's not permanently gone. We can actually, there are things we can do to get that back out onto the board. So we'll, we'll see that when we get to it. Let's go back now to our combat. We'll continue along even though I think we're done. Uh, step five is now where you would have surface engagement. Fire all naval units, naval combat factors at enemy surface and naval units. This is the step that is missing the part about the coastal defense unit. So it should say here, fire all naval units and or coastal defense units, combat factors at enemy surface. So here, uh, we had a coastal defense unit, <laughs> but it's gone now, so it can't fire. It is, if, if it's not, it's simultaneous for each step, but not from step to step. So you've got to survive one step to do something in the next step. So there will be no surface engagement here. And I guess likewise, the, well, no, there's no, uh, we have no ships from the US, so nothing happens there. There's no amphibious assault step yet, but we still have that invasion fleet coming in. So we got to watch out for that. And that is it for the combat phase. And so I am going to return now everything back to where it goes. We'll take the battle marker away. And so now the Aleutians is without that coastal defense unit. And that's, that, that's not good. The Shokaku, we're going to put these back here. And then Kaga should have a fighter. It does. We will put those back. Actually, uh, do we put the, let me see, let's see, where's the fighter? I'm going to leave the fighter out there just for one second. I need to clarify whether or not that stays in the air until we get through 
steps, these remaining steps, because there, there might be, the cap duty may extend beyond just that one battle. So looking at, so we're going into the mutual return segment now, and I was trying to see if that the fighter unit flying cap over here would stay in the air, but it does not look like that's the case. So Kaga's fighter group will land. We'll put them back on the Kaga. And now that, I'm uh, not moving our marker along here. So that was the mutual return segment for the Japanese. Well, for the, for the, um, for both sides, really. And that will take us to the IJN morale segment. And I don't think that destroying that destroyer is going to have any effect here. So yeah, it's only for carriers, light carriers, and battleships. So we don't have to worry about that. We move on to the logistics phase. And we do have we do have damaged units now. We have the uh, destroyer group, so let's see if we can do anything with that. Repair is for damaged base units, reduced LAC, and carriers and light carriers only. So we guess we can't repair that destroyer, and it may be that the destroyer is destroyed unless it comes back out through some other place. So I'll have to check on that too. All right, so that is the logistics segment, and now we will go into the USN G1 segment. So I will pull out the nicer player's aid card. And you'll remember there are four G1 through G4 actions that we will go through, and you do one, one of these choices per, per action. So we're going to start with G1. And let's see, I can reorganize a task force. I don't think I want to do that. Can, Create a new task force, which maybe recruit reinforcements. We still have some aircraft and a destroyer and a battleship out there. May want to do that. Replace. I don't think there's any aircraft I need to replace. And then replace a coastal defense unit. You may want to do this. If a USN task force is in the same space as an IJN objective space whose coastal defense unit has been eliminated, you may select the corresponding coastal defense unit from USN eliminated display space and place it full strength on that island. But there's no USN task force in that space, so that's what's going to stop us from doing that. So we still have a still have a major problem going on in the illusions. So with that in mind, I may want to think about either uh, recruiting one, maybe the battleship. And I'm looking, because I've got a task force already in the West Coast. I've also got Pearl Harbor Task Force 16. I don't really want to send Task Force 16 to the Aleutians, though. So I've got a bad feeling we're going to need that down in the Midway soon enough. Be pretty ahistorical, too, right? <laughs> Not that that's a bad thing. I don't mind ahistorical situations arising in these kinds of games. That's why I like to play them. But I just don't think it's strategically that's the right choice here. I could bring the battleship out, and then that would provide a battleship and the destroyer for Task Force 11, and I could move Task Force 11 towards the Aleutians, and I already have uh, a, a cruiser and a destroyer already there, and I could reorganize that and move it forward. I think that may be the thing to do. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to recruit. We're going to recruit reinforcements, so, so it says select one unit and place it in West Coast or Pearl Harbor if it's a naval unit. So let's recruit the battleship. And I'm going to put it into the West Coast because I want to use Task Force 11 to take it to Alaska. And remember, I can't put it directly into the task force. That's, that's a different action for me to take. So it just comes out, goes into the West Coast, and then later I can put it into the task force. And also another thing I could do is I could I, I wouldn't have to even move the task force eleven if I didn't want to. I can actually move naval units independently as long as they stay on the black route lines. They cannot go into the uh, plotting spaces, the circles. They can only go to the through the uh, route line. So I, I don't even have to move task force eleven if I don't want to. I think I'm going to want to though. Now we go to G2, the intelligence actions. So remember, this is where in the intelligent actions that if you want to try to take an action against 
uh, Japanese forces, you're going to want the units, the task forces spotted so that you can actually bomb or take actions against them. So here, I can do a naval air search, and now I've got a bomber in the Aleutians, and this is where I can use this bomber to try to do something against these, these units. And of course here, the main body is spotted. It's only got a destroyer in it though, so I'm not too worried about that. So I think what I might do here is, let's see, naval air search. Can't do that because I don't have any of the required units there, but I could do a seaplane search. No, I can't. <laughs> I wish I could do a seaplane search, but my seaplanes have all been blowed up because they, they, they knocked out the coastal defense unit and I don't have an AVD there. All right, well, the only thing I can do is signals intelligence again. So let's do that. Let's, uh, that, remember, that's where it allows me to pull the next operations marker from the pool. So let's do that. We can see what's going to come ahead the next turn. So reaching into the cup, we pull. What is that? That is, and I have not pulled this one yet. This is the reinforcement marker. So let's put that up there. And I, that's not going to tell me much because I think what's going to happen, and I don't know, I haven't looked at the rules yet. I think what that's going, what that's going to mean is there's going to be some kind of change to the board over here, and I'm probably going to end up drawing another operations marker anyway. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe not. Let's see. Yeah, and it says you do that. You pick it, you set it aside, and then continue on. So that takes us to step G3, the operations actions. Here I can do a naval operation, a land-based air operation. I can redeploy a task force. So this is where I could move one of the task forces to an adjacent home base. So I can move task force 11 to Alaska, but I don't have that battleship in there yet. And I think that happens in the G1 phase where you do the reorganization of the task force. Again, I could go ahead and just move the, the battleship on its own, but I do not want to do that. So here I'm either going to do a naval operation or I'm going to do a land-based air operation. I believe that the only thing, if I do a land-based operation, it's going to be the Aleutian route. It's not, you know, it says, it says select a route, but the only place I really want, want to do anything is the Aleutian route right now. So we can launch land or naval air units based at home bases or USN controlled objective spaces to conduct strikes against spotted task forces or island bases or uh, controlled spaces. Air units may also be launched to provide cap. Well, that's not a thing for us in the Aleutians. We have no fighters there. And actually, I think last turn I called, I said there were three bombers up here. One of these is actually a fighter. So there were two bombers and one fighter unit in Alaska. I could launch the bomber at the main body. And the other thing I could do is, for the naval operation, I could launch, not launch, but I could move task forces around. I don't think I want to do that either because I only have task force eight. You know, I say that, but I say I want to wait for this other task force to get up here. But the problem is I've got these other, these other task forces coming into the Aleutians. And if this invasion task force arrives and flips the control to the Japanese side, I think that's it for the Aleutian Island route. I think I've lost it. And I think that's another thing on my card is once you lose an objective space and it flips, I don't think there's anything at all you can do to, to get that space back. At least not in the basic game. I think the, the advanced rules may provide for that. But I know in the basic game, which is what I'm playing here, I, I don't think there's anything I can do to retake an objective once it flips to the Japanese side, which is why I was considering maybe I don't want to wait for this to get up. Maybe I want to bring the, the cruiser and the destroyer forward to try to sink some of those ships. So I think maybe I, I think what I'm going to do, I think I'm going to try, so this, remember the main body is spotted. I, I think I'm going to try to take out that destroyer with this B-17. That seems like overkill. And I honestly, that, that's really the only thing I can do. It's, it's the only one that's spotted. Uh, so, okay, so, so for land-based air operations, select one route, the Aleutian route, launch any land or naval air units based at a home base or US controlled objective space to conduct strikes against spotted Japanese task force and or island bases or, or Japanese controlled objective spaces. Land and naval units, air units may also be 
launch to provide cap. Well, that's not going to happen. So we're going to launch this bomber to attack the main body task force. Launch Japanese land-based fighter units for cap missions for any island bases or Japanese-controlled objective spaces. Well, that's not the case here. For each space containing Japanese and USN units, execute and resolve the combat procedure. And it says if there's more than one combat, then you would resolve them in order, uh, starting with the space that's closest to the home base. We only have one battle here. And I'm looking too, because there's no, it looks like that the, the second carrier strike force, it looks like they cannot provide any cap for the main body, which is also an interesting thing I didn't notice before, unless I'm doing something wrong, which is entirely possible, but I don't think so. So we are going to have a battle, the main body, and so that's going to give us a bomber, which is going to attack a task force. That's going to bring out this destroyer group. So these are in the ships for the Japanese task force. Just a quick look. It's just going to be resolve a battle, combat procedure. Yep, that's it. So that's all that's going to happen here. So we'll bring out our combat cheat sheet and we will go through all the steps, although we're not going to use every step. So we start with air to air. There's not any. We'll go to anti-air. Well, there is anti-air fire here. So this destroyer has an has an air combat factor of two. So it's going to fire at the B-17. So let's roll and... And I didn't really look before I started when I did this. You want to make sure that whatever aircraft you're, you're using to bomb actually has naval or surface combat factors, and it does. It has one. So it's actually kind of a risk here to send this B-17 in. It doesn't have a very good chance of hitting anything. That's okay, though. So the destroyer's anti-aircraft fire misses completely. Roll to five. Uh, so that's the air, the anti-air step. Now we go to air naval. Fire all air units naval combat factors at enemy naval units so this is where we try to bomb that destroyer so we have got to roll a one uh yes we got to roll a one here to hit so let's do that and see how good this b17 can do he rolls a four so it's a miss not surprising i guess so that was air to Air naval, then we go air ground, that's nothing here, no surface engagement, no amphibious assault, no nothing else. That's going to end combat. You know, we had a one in six chance of doing something, so why not do it? Because it's not looking too good in the Aleutians right now. We'll put that destroyer back into main body B. That is it for the operations actions. Make sure that all surviving air units return. So we took our G3, and I'm not moving forward the marker. I forget to do that all the time. And then we're going to go to G4, which is the logistics segment. And here we can repair damaged naval units. Remember, we still have the Saratoga, which is still damaged. And I really would love to get that out of the damaged block there. I need to get that back out onto the board. We can repair damaged naval aircraft or land aircraft. Or we could repair a damaged land unit. So I'm, we're going to try to get the Saratoga out again. It's the only thing that makes sense here to me. Again, to repair, we're looking at a carrier here. So I've got to roll a four, five, or six to bring the Saratoga out. So please, 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 let's get the Saratoga back out. We roll a six. Yay! <laughs> and I believe I'm looking because I think it goes into either West Coast or Pearl. Yeah, so for each one selected, um, West Coast or Pearl. And it's saying that only, you know, only one of these can repair one unit at a time. So we're definitely going to take the Saratoga. You know, I said we're going to put it in Pearl. Let's think about this for one little second here because I may not want to put it in Pearl. With my thought process being I could put it in the West Coast and when I go to Reorganize the task force. I could actually send a carrier up to Alaska and the Aleutians. Because remember, the Saratoga, now that it's repaired, it still has its... Where is Saratoga? It still has its three air units with it. So that's pretty powerful for the uh, U.S. side. So I could put this in the West Coast and, and send it to Alaska. Now, the downside to that is, again, we don't know what's going to happen coming up. So if we start getting activations in the 
Rabul lines or Midway, then I may need that carrier south and not north. Could send it. I could, you know what, let's, hmm. Let's go ahead and put it in West Coast for now. That'll give me time to think about what to do there. What to do. Again, another reason why I do like this game is because you have to make decisions like that. It's, you need to decide, you're making some serious decisions about where you want to send your, and you can see you've only got five carriers, where you want to send those things. And it, it's, you've got to think about really what your strategy is going to be. All right, so we um, pulled out, we repaired the Saratoga finally. And that's it. That is it for the logistics phase, and that will take us into the administrative phase. And you will remember that the administration phase is basically all, um, well, first we remove the operations, and the current operations marker comes out, goes into already played. This one will now come down, and all spotted task forces get flipped to their unspotted side. Now, except I don't think this one does, because if I remember correctly, if there is something about, actually, I think maybe it does. Let's go ahead and flip it. Let me check the rule. And I'm thinking because whenever there are, I know that when you have two task forces, two enemy task forces in the same space, they remain spotted. So I don't think you'd flip them here. But let me check and see. Make sure we are doing this right. So here's the spotting rules. And it says that a task force becomes spotted if, well, it's not number one because that's if they conduct a successful intelligence operation. Uh, if you conduct a signals intelligence, no. If an enemy naval or air unit enters its space or vice versa, it's not that. Well, let's see. There is an enemy air unit here. And this is considered the, the same space, this objective space. Huh? Mm. Successful searches conducted. No, a task force is in the same space as an enemy controlled IJN objective space. Ah, uh, that's a little vague, but I honestly think that this task force is spotted. The, where's the administration phase say? Does it have anything to say about that? It says to flip them to their non spotted side. We're going to go ahead and do that, but I'm pretty sure that the main body is spotted. And even, it kind of has to be because when we go back to the next turn, and we're looking at the spotting rules and regulations, we're going to see that that task force is spotted anyway. So maybe that's what they're accounting for there, I think. So that is the administration phase. We're back at the beginning of the next turn. I am going to stop it here. I wanted to do just a quick turn again. It's just I don't want to make these videos too long because it's hard to set aside a huge chunk of time to watch, you know, two hours worth of a game here. So I'm going to stop it here. I think we're almost uh, we're almost 40 minutes in, if I'm reading that correctly. Editing will certainly get it down a little bit. And as always, uh, let me know in the comments below if I've made a mistake or missed something. Thank you for watching. Please consider liking and subscribing. That will help me to get my numbers up and give me some opportunities to do other things with these videos if I can get enough likes and subscribes. And uh, again, the Patreon page is up if you'd really like to support the channel. Go check that out. Thank you, and I will see you back here next time.